2,000 people at the University of California, Santa Barbara, honored six murdered schoolmates in fitting fashion Wednesday. The paddle out happened just offshore from the campus. The killer's parents are in seclusion, but a friend is telling their side of the story. As John Blackstone reports, a man says Elliot Roger showed no violent signs before his rampage. On the night that Elliot Roger brought terror and death to the streets of Santa Barbara, his parents in separate cars raced to try to stop him. Longtime friend Simon Astaire. In each car, they are listening to the radio and they are hearing that there's been a massacre in Santa Barbara. They then talk about a black BMW, and Elliot has a black BMW. And Peter said to me that during that drive, he knew that his son had caused this. You had met Elliot? Yes. You knew yes. him to some yes. extent? Yes, I did. He was a boy that was unbearably removed. He hardly joined in conversation, and when he replied to something, he looked startled. I th thought he was the loneliest person I had ever seen in my life. I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires. Does the family themselves feel a sense of responsibility? Inwardly, I think we must do when something like this happens. But I think where they can be at peace with all this, and it's the truth, is that since he was nine years old, they have tried to help him. They are mourning more for the innocents that didn't return on Friday night than the life of their son. Too many have died. Richard Martinez, whose son Christopher was killed, is calling for stricter gun control. Not one more. Astaire Thank says Elliot's you. father, Peter, would like to meet him. I think Mr. Martinez, even the way he speaks, is clearly a passionate, wonderful man in deep grief. They, they share that and we'll bring them together and maybe they will have a voice together. Last month, Elliot's mother alerted the Santa Barbara sheriff that her son may be a danger, but deputies determined there was no reason for concern. Do they blame the sheriff's department for not being more aggressive? No blame. I haven't heard one word of blame. Elliot fooled everyone for a very, very long time. And, you know, ultimately that's what he did with the police. Elliot's, in his, in his writings, expressed this hatred toward women. Is that more of, what, of how he fooled people? Well, I've asked Peter about that, and I, I think he was in search of a girlfriend. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It had shocked Peter to hear of that aggression towards women, or even the way that he would have, must have looked at women in his household. He did not know this side of his son, no. Quite seriously, they are unable to, to string a sentence together. The memories of their son are going to be very difficult to have any loving memories of him. It's going to be painful forever. Forever, forever and ever. And hen hence their, in a way, irreparable grief. For CBS This Morning, John Blackstone, Los Angeles. Boy, it's heartbreaking for all involved. It sounds like they tried and tried and tried, knew that he was troubled. Mm -hmm. And their best efforts weren't enough. It's just yeah. sad. And even the mother calling the police and letting yeah, them know. I think fine. this debate, though, will continue as mm -hmm. uh, the father, Richard Martinez, has that pledge, not one more, in terms of requesting yes. stricter gun laws for those that are mentally ill. It's about guns and mental illness. Right? Guns and mental illness.